Hey guys, Fancycam here from Markman Gaming, and today I'll be bringing you a beginner's guide to the creation kit. Now, for this tutorial I will be using the Fallout 4 version of the creation kit, but most of the skills and tips that I'll be giving to you can be replicated in, say, the Skyrim version of the creation kit. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to go ahead and show you is basically what you need to do with any mod you want to make. You're going to want to go, you want to get the creation kit open, you're going to go over to file, then data. And this is essentially how you load the assets that you're going to use when modding. Now, to, to begin with, you're just going to want to click on Fallout 4 over here, make sure it's ticked there, and then click OK. But as a little um, side comment, this is exactly what you want to do if you're making a fresh mod, starting off from scratch. However, if you're editing a mod that you've already made, you'll also want to click on that mod and click Set as Active File which essentially just means you're using the Fallout 4 as your master file, meaning that you can use all the assets from Fallout 4 in whichever mod you're editing, but then you're using an active file, which is what will be saved as the plugin and how you will actually put that mod then into the game at a later stage. So to begin with, if you're just making a mod from fresh, you're gonna click Fallout 4, make sure that's your master file, and then click OK. Now at this point, it's gonna take quite a while to load and just bear with the software because a lot of the time it'll, it'll feel like maybe the creation kit's crashed but don't ever jump straight to closing the creation kit and restarting it give it a good few minutes um, it'll take longer depending on your system but most of the time it won't crash occasionally it might because it, it's a very CPU heavy software but give it a minute and it should be okay okay so once the software has finished loading your Fallout 4 data file you will get a warnings window uh, it could appear anywhere on the screen but essentially it will look like there's a lot of errors going on however this isn't actually a problem you're gonna get these warnings every time you open it it just it just happens I don't actually know exactly why it happens every time but it does don't worry about that it doesn't mean that anything's broken so just click clear on that and you can close that window entirely okay so now I've showed you how to open a data file in the most normal sense what you'll do for most data what I'm going to also show you, as a little side note, you're probably also thinking to yourself, what if I want to use, say, the DL any of my DLCs that I've got, as well as the Fallout 4 assets, when making a mod? And this is slightly more complicated in that you will have to change uh, a couple of .ini files in order to get this working. So I'll show you how to do that right now. Okay, so you're going to want to go to this directory, which should be in your Fallout 4 folder, just in Steam, in Steam Apps Common. Um, and then you're going to go look where you've installed the creation kit and you should have these two .ini files creation kit and creation kit press first of all open creation kit and open it with something like notepad that you can edit the text with and you'll get this here uh, except this will be there so essentially what you want to do is go under general and paste in be allow multiple masters equals one um, I'll throw that in the description for you just so you can easily copy and paste and then you just want to save that and then you want to do pretty much the exact same thing with creation kit press go to open again with a notepad software wordpad what have you uh, and paste it in right here at the top and then file save once again uh, one last thing that you want to do is open this directory which should be in your documents under my games fallout 4 you want to go to the fallout 4 dot any um, make sure in properties that this is set as not read only so untick read only Go ahead, do as you did with the other 2.ini files, open it with, say, a notepad software. Um, and here you want to control F, find this S resource archive list to. And you just want to make sure that this is the exact line of text that is written after that. When I opened it the first time, it just had animations.ba2, so it looked like that. But uh, essentially, we want to copy and paste in all of this. Only do this if you have these actual uh, DLCs. So I have all the DLCs, including contraptions, but I haven't pasted that in yet because I don't plan on using any of the contraption content. But as you do, um, if you want to just check what those DLCs are called, uh, you can do that using the Nexus Mod Manager if you click on Plugins. Um, but basically, DLC Coast is the Far Harbor DLC. You've got DLC Robot, which is the uh, Automatron DLC, and Workshop 01. Or uh, the contraptions will most likely be DLC, will be DLC Workshop 02. I'm fairly sure that's the name of that plugin. 
So for instance, I'll show you right now. I'll, I'll go ahead and add that in. So DLC workshop 2 hyphen main dot ba2 and then a comma and space there. And you want to save this file as well um, and close that up and then go back to properties and then set it as read only. The reason you want this dot any as read only is if you're using any mods and anything goes wrong, um, the game will then be able to revert your dot any file to its previous state if it's set as read only. Okay, so once you've done that, okay, so once you've edited all those dot any files, make, a new, make sure you open the creation kit up fresh and new just so that all the changes have been applied and then go to file data again and this time you'll be able to add one of your DLCs that you've got or multiple of them so for instance I'll go ahead and add the automatron DLC here up at the top and then click OK and once again there will be a hefty load time but the software hasn't crashed but it will now take even longer to load all of those assets so keep bear that in mind if you want to use all the DLCs um, because it's probably going to be easier for you if you have in mind exactly which DLCs you want to use uh, just click on those because it'll take less time to load and the software will run a bit more smoothly okay so that was tip number one just showing you how to get into the software now moving on to the second point which is I'm just going to show you some easy tips and tricks for editing an interior space now most people building mods I've seen a very large amount of mods which are just new interior spaces that you get to work with and this is uh, one of the simplest mods to make because you actually have most of what you need right here already um, so what we're going to do is just load up a data file that I've been playing with anyway which is a little a little vault area that I've been making so um, as I've said before if you want to use a mod that you're already using you're gonna click set as active file which I have done here and we'll load this up okay so I've loaded up my uh, mod and you'll notice there's absolutely no change to when you just load up a regular data file the reason for this is you actually have to go ahead and find your mod real quick. So for me, this is fairly easy because what I like to do with my mods is name them with MMG just at the front, just the Batman Gaming uh, little signature so that I know it's my mod. Uh, and this, this will help you in most cases if you say need to tweak someone else's mod um, and they put maybe mod at the front. You might put mod at the front of your mods. What I'd recommend is pick a little small key phrase uh, that you will be able to recognize and put them in front of all your mods and it'll just make it way easier to organize for you So I've gone here in interiors because I'm looking for an interior cell um, But you may be looking at something that's under the Commonwealth in general or Diamond City and there's these are basically the areas you can look at so we'll open this up so the tips I want to show you now are ways that you can navigate this window over here the render window and how you can actually um, navigate and move around the objects in this window because that's also really important if you want to build any interior space you you want to do it at a fairly quick pace if you're building anything big okay so first of all we're going to go ahead and go through how to actually navigate around this screen because when you load up you will basically be looking directly down at the space so if you want to move left right up down basically anywhere on this horizontal axis you want to hold space and then just move your mouse around and if you want to change say like this or like this really go in a spherical movement you want to hold down shift then scroll wheel is to zoom in and zoom out so you want to be using zoom in zoom out space move with the mouse and shift move with the mouse really all in tandem to get the angles that you want so while we're on the subject of keyboard mappings um say i select let's just select this piece of furniture here if i click w it will come up with this little uh these circles here and this just allows you to rotate it in essentially any direction you want um, now also I should also mention I have these two little red markers here uh, this angular and this circle on a grid if you click these these basically it snap to grid and snap to angle meaning that you can have uh, a less free movement so you know if you want to get something really properly in place about it so that it's um, on a grid and it's like right now because I've got free movement it's really difficult to get this flat again because it's, it's kind of you know going into the ground and out the ground 
and you'd need very very careful hands and a high dpi mouse to actually do that properly um so it's much easier to just you know snap tangle snap to grid and drag that and um it'll snap to the places that you want it to go to instead um which he hasn't there but you know i'm just gonna leave it like that because it's absolutely beautiful okay uh so that's w w do that if you want to turn that off w again and then you can move it as normal just drag it around flipping it about like that you know um and then if you go and click a this will deactivate this ambient light that uh, all the interiors will have at first so say you haven't put any lighting in yet um, this is what the level will look like it'll be very bright um, when you have the ambient lighting on which is this little button here if you don't want to click A I'm not sure why you wouldn't it's a bit quicker but it basically turns this on and off um, and when it's off you will only get the lighting that's in the level which is helpful for when you actually want to see what the level will look like when you're playing the game uh, so this is the actual lighting so if I my character was to come in here and walk around this is what it would actually look like whereas this uh, when you press a again this is what it looks like when you're building which is helpful so that you can see what you're doing in general because you might have a very dark area that you want to keep dark um, but building it obviously you don't want to be too dark so you'll be able to see what you're doing so a does that okay so the last little tip i'm going to give you on movement controls is d and z um what d does is basically just deselect everything so let's say we select I don't know, them two these two cells here um and we do, sometimes because you can select really small things like over here we've got the light bulb which actually signifies a light you can't always see that you might have it selected and not even know about it and um if you're accidentally moving stuff around if you or if you're not sure that, it, that you've got something selected you just go ahead and press d and it'll unselect everything for you. And the last thing I'm going to show you is, as I said, Z. If you if you are um, manipulating any object, you go ahead, hold Z. Uh, you have to hold Z. If you just tap Z, it'll only come up for a second. Hold Z, and it'll come up with this. And that allows you to move things up and down, uh, and up and down. That's just some movement tips you got for working with interiors or exteriors, or basically whenever you're building. Which actually brings me swiftly onto tip number three. This is just. As you'll notice, I've got a lot of furniture uh, and little little set pieces in my level. And if you want to get any real furniture or anything, you want to look at your object window over here. And this has most of the things you'll be using when you're building a level. You want to go over to world objects and then you want to go over to furniture. And this just has a massive list of the furniture in game. All of this here. Uh, you can click like on the menu and then just search for things. But this isn't the only furniture in game. For instance, if you click on movable static, you've got other things in here. Um, got like really oddly specific ones. I'm not entirely sure why they had to be in a separate menu, but you have a couple of oddly specific things in places. You've got containers, uh, loot bags, stuff like that. Um, you've got ones that are specific to actual places, like over here, you've got Abernathy Farm vendor chest, which is the specific vendor chest in Abernathy Farm. Um, so there's some weirdly listed ones, but most of the stuff you're working with will either be in furniture, container, you got doors over here, um, movable static has a lot to work with as well. You got static will have a lot of the stuff you want to use as well. This has, a, for instance, this has all the vault pieces that I've been working with to build this level over here. And as a little tip, uh, you'll learn this as you go along as you use more objects certain things in groups have like keywords to look at so for instance if i was on vault i might want all the residential looking things which are like all these walls and these doors and stuff so if you type res it'll just bring up all the different named uh, vault pieces that have res in the name say i want a cryopod i've got one in here already just go ahead drag that into your level and it'll pop up here uh, so you can go Pushy dead wife in here again. You know, get two of them on the go. Or husband, depending on what you played as. When you're working with furniture that isn't static, it will basically tell. It will have like um, these little blue and yellow dots on it, and that's showing that a character, like an NPC or your character, can actually get into these. Some of them only NPCs can climb into. Uh, a lot of the 
things in game that you can't get into npcs can get into but you can't uh, it still applies to objects in the creation kit but npcs can get in most of these things if they have this little nav mesh and talking of nav mesh that's going to be my tip number four uh, nav meshing a fairly simple process but a lot of mod designers when they're building interiors exteriors what have you don't actually do this and the problem with that is you can't bring any of your companions into an area with you which most people like to do if you've got a companion coming with you it feels it breaks the immersion when you can't bring them then into an area you know it just feels unfinished in a way but this is actually quite simple you just go over to nav mesh generation and you want to use recast based generation you can use havoc at a higher level but to start with we'll just go ahead and use recast now what this will do is bring up these red markers everywhere it kind of just generates that itself uh, it's kind of an estimation of where it assumes you'll want the areas to actually be nav meshed um, so these are the settings that I'd recommend putting in to begin with uh, cell size 8, cell height 8, 1 to 8, 32 uh, these are pretty good default settings to start off with you don't have to go with these exact settings if you don't want to it's just what I'd recommend it seems to work for most um, places that I try to nav mesh uh, basically what the nav mesh will initially do and it hasn't done it here because i've already nav meshed this area but for instance this is actually a floor piece so the nav mesh originally appeared here like all over this area and obviously i don't want companions accidentally spawning up over here and me losing them so i took that nav mesh off there and really it's quite simple to do that you just want to tap on these little blocks and you can click delete on any of them um so they work in little triangles like that you if you click where these tiny little squares are, squares are on each side you can manipulate these triangles and you want them to all be joined together because otherwise you'll have a blank area where someone can't walk uh, so you just want your whole area that anybody's going to be walking on wants to have these little red oh, there we go Let's do that sorry uh, these little red areas oh you'll see there uh, it's happened again just because it reloaded the nav mesh um, that all this area is nav mesh so you can kind of just like drag and click all of that uh, and just delete all that nav meshing because it's you know you don't want people walking in areas uh, where they actually shouldn't be going and you can do this all across uh, if you want to get really snicky about it like for instance when this first loads in it doesn't go right to the edges of the floor but sometimes that's a good thing because if your companions are walking about and this is too close to the wall they can clip um, in and out of the wall just because it's, it's a Bethesda game and there's gonna be glitches because it's such a huge and, and like dense world that it just happens but basically try and keep these just outside of the walls just outside of the objects and you'll reduce clipping that way so that's nav meshing so earlier on we were talking about this cell view over here and you might be wondering how do i create a brand new level like if i'm wanting to build an interior like this how do i just start from scratch now what you can do if you don't want to actually start from pure scratch like out of nothing is you can just copy one of these and then change the name um, as long as it's an interior location you can just delete whatever door they're using and um, then they will get teleported into that area as well but if you want to create a new interior entirely from scratch you just want to click on any random interior in this list go to edit and you'll get this menu here and then you can just right click and click new uh, and name it whatever you want Um, and then you can kind of edit the general ambient lighting, the interior data direction ambient lighting. I won't show you that all in this video because it's just kind of a general beginner's guide. But the last thing I do actually want to show you is character creation. Now this can get a little bit complicated the more you go into it. For instance, if you want to create a companion, uh, that can get quite complicated. But for the moment, we'll just go ahead and create a really simple character. Uh, nothing too special. And I'll just show you how to do that. You want to go back to this object window menu over here. You want to click actors, going to actor, and then you'll get this massive list of most, well, I say most, a fair amount of the characters already in game. Uh, just go ahead and click, right click on any of these and click new. Once again, you'll get some warnings, clear that, cross it off, doesn't matter. Okay. So it'll bring up this menu and it's, it's quite a good menu because it comes straight away with this render. Although if you don't have this render menu, just look down here where it says preview and you want to tick full. And that'll, that'll give you this over here. Also, you can also click head 
um, which zooms in on the head so if you're editing any facial features it makes that a lot easier. For now let's just uh, go back on full. And then you want to get an ID that you'll recognize within the creation kit. Um, this can also be used in the game for instance if you want to spawn this person but uh, I just like to go ahead and as I say use one that I recognize MMG just make it easier for myself. Uh, just John Smith um, and then name them as I said before short name is I believe what happens when you see them from a distance um, I can't actually remember what short name fully does. I believe it's when you see them from a distance um, you just see like their first name rather than their full name when you're actually talking to them so but this can be whatever you want it could just be John for instance, I don't sweat patch is also acceptable. Now, if you see all these little tick boxes over here, these are different things that can be assigned to the character. One of the ones that um, I should definitely mention is essential uh, and unique, because essential is whether or not the person can actually die, or they just do that companion thing where they lay on the ground for a bit and then they come back up. Um, if you have it clicked off, it means they can indeed be murdered. Uh, you might not want this if it's say a companion or really important to a quest and also unique is quite important because you want to click unique if you're creating a character that will only appear once in the game but if you're kind of creating a general raider character like a new faction type you want to untick that because you want a, a number of these people to appear and all of these can really be applied you've got invulnerable means they don't take any damage doesn't bleed so it doesn't bleed um, no activation as in when you go and talk to them they don't say hello and whatnot so all of that's optional you can click any of these I'll click essential and unique you can also click is car gen face preset which I believe means it will give them kind of just a general face so I'm just gonna go right to the start of this menu and just very quickly go through most of these different options so we've got to traits uh, and when you click on traits the essential unique will all these tick boxes will be turned off um, but that's just for this first menu really. This is where you can, in traits, you can make them any race you want. Um, I believe a lot of them actually, yeah, you can make a dog for instance. Uh, this obviously completely changes what they look like. You can work with a child, a dog, but depending on what you click, you'll get a certain amount of options. Uh, for instance, a human has the most kind of facial options to work with. If you're working with a turret, for instance, you're not going to have a lot of options with a turret. You can't really edit their face. So just keep that in mind. Um, I'm sure you know what race you want to work with. That'll be why you clicked it. Let's just go ahead and make a ghoul, for instance. We've got a ghoul over here. Skin tends to be only applicable to the thing listed. So for instance, if you're making a character that is power armor, the armor, power armor skin will only apply to them. Uh, like if I click helmet clothes, it just it just does that to a ghoul because that that cannot be applied to a ghoul because it isn't relevant. Uh, so we're just gonna click none there. You can make them female or male. The standard is male when you first first load them up. How sexist, you disgusting, misogynistic slob. Uh, so we'll go ahead and click female. <laughs> um, you can give them the opposite gender and animations, uh, which can either be funny or just I don't know that you just want say a male character to have a feminine walk or a female character to have a masculine walk uh, that's completely an option to you you can just click opposite gender animations um, and they will act like the other gender in game acts um, you've also got thin muscular and fat over here which is essentially at the beginning of the game when you create your character you can make them you know fatter uh, thinner more muscular more fat Oops, I clicked enter there. If you do accidentally do that like what I just did, uh, I could have cut that out, but I'm actually going to give you another little tip here. If you do that by accident, click enter and close any menu, because it's most of the time when you type something in, you'll just be used to clicking enter, so I do I actually do that a lot. It's fine, just go back to this menu where you found the actor originally, and type in your little um, designator that you've made, for instance, Mind's Imagery, and you'll find your characters in here. Um, so you can just literally just reopen that and go back to editing them also you've got all this so these can morph the body which will make it look unrealistic at times if you kind of do like that um, you can get clipping issues with this 
so just keep that in mind when you're playing around with these because uh, if you have a big muscular character and you massively pump out their arms sometimes it won't look very realistic you'll get clipping issues there um but you can yeah you can morph them specifically on these areas like give them bigger arms bigger legs for instance so stats are essentially as it's written they are statistics of the character that you're working with you got action points agility charisma endurance health intelligence look perception speed and strength you've also got all these down here if you want to auto calculate stats which kind of gives them just a basic amount of stats stats so if it's just a character that you'll be talking to just saying you know walking over saying hello to that's all you really need is automated stats um, but if it's a, I don't know, a companion for instance, you might want them to have a massive health. So just, you can boost that amount to like 100 and they just won't die. There's also classes, which is kind of just the, these are basically um, presets of statistics. So for instance, your average be a, a Brotherhood of Steel soldier will have these axe values. Um, so you can click any of these, it doesn't actually change their faction, it just uh, changes the stats to fit with that. You can also level them um, up, but you can also have a multiplier so that they level up quicker, etc, etc. Okay, so on the template menu you're looking at all the people in game that you might want to base your character off. Um, it just means that, say for instance we click Alice Thompson, I don't actually even know who that is in game. Uh, but we click her, you can use their traits or use their stats, use their script, use their faction. You can pretty much use anything from them um, and it will make them like that character. See, for instance, because I used their traits straight away, it's basically made me look like that character, which is fine. We'll just continue as Alice over here. And then you'll get the factions that they're in. Oh, I remember Alice. Alice is in the Institute. So she's one of the people in the Institute, which means when you go on her factions, it's uh, got this. But normally, you wouldn't have anything. Basically, it'd just be empty when you're making a completely new character. For little Alice, she's in the Crime Institute and the Institute faction. And you can add all the other, uh, as many factions as you want. Um, but be kind of logical with that for instance if they're in the brotherhood and the institute that could cause problems because the brotherhood and institute fight so i don't even know exactly how that would play out if they just wouldn't react to either faction um but for instance if you put them in the brotherhood faction um they are they will be likely to fight other people then when we move on to ai data so this picks how they act when you meet them for the first time you can have them unaggressive aggressive which means that they'll uh, be angry at you very aggressive is i believe they will attack you on site and frenzies frenzied is they just attack everyone in the area all the time um confidence average brave foolhardy this is i believe how likely they are to actually fight um if something's going on for instance if you make them cowardly they're more likely to run away um, but if you make them foolhardy, they're more likely to go in bun buns blazing. Uh, guns blazing. Assistance is helps nobody, which means that somebody, if, uh, say, a character nearby is getting shot at, they won't care. Um, helps allies is anybody allied with their faction. If they're getting shot at or whatnot, they will go help them. Friends and allies is, as you can guess, they will help friends and allies. Agro radius is essentially how close um, you have to be for them to do these different things. Um, so, for instance, with raiders in the game, you might have noticed if you stand a certain distance away from them, they'll just shout like mean things at you. But if you actually like go up close to them, they will just instantly start attacking you. So you can pick this radius. Uh, you've got morality over here, um, which is whether they will commit any crimes. Basically, you've got property crime, which means they'll steal things violence crime which means they'll kill people and any crime is just either of the two inventory is as you can guess anything that they're holding or whatnot um so default outfit is helpful because it's basically just what they'll be wearing when you meet them because i've got a child character it's quite difficult for me to actually find like you ha you'd have to pick a child uh something that you know one of the children outfits because um otherwise it's just not going to work but basically most the majority of the 
other outfits can be applied to human and ghoul characters so it gives you plenty of options um, I think I believe there's ones that are specific to say super mutants and such uh, yeah you got super mutants so that you know once again apply a bit of logic you can work out which ones can be applied to who let's give them let's make it full 81 child over here that's what our athletes will be wearing now sleep outfit is just when they get in bed what they'll be wearing uh, doesn't really matter for make sense to make that pajamas you know just put pajamas on before she goes to bed uh, and then you've got this over here which essentially lets you put any object into their inventory and you can get really complex with this because you can change all the little values but I'm not going to go into that right now basically just pick whichever object you want you can edit it you know change all the values that's all available to you um, and count is just how many are in their inventory owner is whether they own it or not faction is whether a faction owns it or not animation it based on whatever type of character you pick it will give you default animations um, and you can have a look at them here you know this is them actually animating in game and these are all just uh, applied when and if they're needed so if she's fighting she will hit like that um, or like that you know the, the, it just adds a variety I suppose you could oh god <laughs> clearly that one doesn't function properly um, I suppose you could essentially apply just about any animation but not all of them are going to work and you could build all the animations from scratch if you're making a very unique character but you don't need to uh, it will give you all of these straight off the bat also there's a little mention about animation if you're looking at any of these if you just want to stop them doing that just go ahead and click resume um, and then preview again and they will be back to their normal on the cross crucified so okay attack data is is essentially just how they actually attack uh, it makes sense obviously based on whatever race you've got it will default to that race so human child will have that much damage um, based on all the different attacks they can use uh, but I don't know if you really want you could give a human child all the damage and attack types of a Myalurk right character gem parts so now this is a pretty important bit this can really change how your character looks um, so when you're actually wanting to edit the face, which obviously is the thing that's going to make them look the most unique Even if you have a massive fat person, you could see a few of massive fat people in the game So you probably want them to look a bit different. You can change their hair color up here at the top So she's no longer a redhead now. She's a dirty blonde um, Facial hair color not really going to apply to a child, but once again, you can change that so that can be different to the actual hair color Which is pretty good uh, you basically get the options that you get in game just in a written format if you want to edit anything specific you click on that specific part and you can edit it in any which way you want I won't go right into that but there's plenty you can actually do to them you can completely basically morph their face and the very last thing I'm going to show you in character creation is the character gen morph which gives you all these options that are present in game where you can basically change all the little parts. If you want to know which part you're editing, you got like nose up here. Uh, different characters, different types of characters will have more options. For instance, just the default human has absolutely loads of different options that you can edit. Um, but you can just change all this stuff around, and it, it very lightly edits the specific parts because there's so many different things. So this is probably the bit on characters that you're going to be spending the most time doing. Um, there's not that many options for a human, so you're not seeing a for a human child even, so you're not seeing that many differences here. But for instance, a just normal human, you will see actual genuine changes when you're playing around with this. And if the changes haven't applied, you can just click preview over here again. Once you're done with your character, you just want to click OK. Once you've made a character, you can find them in here and you can just drop them into your world anywhere really. Uh, for instance, I've got one that I made earlier. A little ghoul character called Clarence Fox and I've just dropped him in here um, and once you've dropped them in there is far more you can do with them such as uh, giving them speech giving them quest lines etc but I won't go into that now because this is just a beginner's guide okay guys this has been a beginner's guide to using the creation kit specifically for Fallout 4 but a lot of the things I've shown you here can be applied to the Skyrim creation kit as well I hope these tips and tricks helped you out and I hope you will now go ahead and make some mods of your own and jump into this great modding community I have for Fallout 4. 
If there's any questions, uh, if there's anything that I've covered in this video that you didn't quite understand and you'd like to ask me about it, go ahead and leave that in the comments. I'll be sure to try and reply to you as quick as I can. So this has been Fancy Cam from Matt My Gaming, and this has been a Matt My Gaming tutorial. I hope you enjoyed what you saw. There's more videos on the channel if you want to check them out. If you've enjoyed what you've seen, please subscribe and give us a like. I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. Adios. I'm in Fallout 4 right now, and today we are looking at Fallout 4's six best settlements. Now, to start with, we're going to look at probably the most obvious settlement in the game. This is a settlement you get first. This is a settlement that is arguably the most pre-war besides maybe Covenant. And it's one of the biggest. This is Sanctuary. Now, you can make a big change to Sanctuary depending on how you...